That's right. New show. Basically the same old theme song. We're back. It's Hitting the Breaks. Episode one, Pilot. Yeehaw! <laughs> Yeehaw! Yeah, we're uh, <laughs> that we're uh, what what ha- what what happens when you get uh, a big city slicker race car driver who moves to Colorado to take care of his dead dad's old hotel? You get hitting the brakes, and we will be hitting the brakes. And brakes, what a show! Brakes is spelled B R E A K S, which. I don't know what that means in the context of this show, but maybe we'll find out. Do you think they just spelled it wrong? <laughs> yep. For the whole thing? I think they did. I don't think they understand that car brakes are spelled B-R-A-K-E-S. <laughs> it's one of the many things that these writers don't know about uh, driving race cars. I'm sorry. By these writers, do you mean Tommy Blaze? <laughs> Yeah, it's probably him alone in a basement or something. Well, according, these things. according to the credits, it is just Tommy Blaze. <laughs> written by Tommy <laughs> Blaze. Full stop. <laughs> beautiful. What a beautiful world we get to uh, dive into that uh, Tommy Blaze has made for us. I mean, what a beautiful bunch of sets that are not on green screens and are actual physical sets. What a beautiful thing. Can you believe how much uh, money and energy and time and thought they put into these sets? I can't believe it. A part of me thinks that, like, the the exterior shot of the hotel is just the actual building that they're filming it in. I think that they didn't build the hotel set. I think that's a real building that they're just filming in. The other ones... Do you think... Yeah, yeah. Pure Fix, uh, like, bought a small town to make this film? I mean, God, they make... God, please. They make enough money that they probably... Yeah, they probably did. It's probably the town David Arrowhite owns as the billionaire owner of Pure Flix. Just gobs of money from uh, Pure Flix. They got subscribers out the Yazoo. Why have we never looked up David Arrowhite's net worth? The internet- I have. It's like oh. $8 billion or something. Okay, well, you're lying now, so now I actually have to look it up. Yeah, I should have said something more realistic, like... Yeah. Less than that. Like, oh, gosh. Oh, David. Oh, okay. All right. Well, according to CelebrityNetWorth.com, David Ayer White's net worth is... Drum roll, please. Six million dollars. Hello. Hello. I mean, that's like... That's more money than you and I have combined, certainly. And probably yeah. most... If you combined our net worth with all of our friends net worth and that maybe everybody we know it still wouldn't be six million dollars so he's doing better than our entire circle of friends but you'd think for someone who built a a network just to produce his own content he'd be doing a little better than that especially if they bought a town so no i don't think they bought a town if david's worth six mil i don't think they could afford a town I think that's the money that we know about. He's probably got a lot of background deals, a lot of Heller Method type situations going on. <laughs> yeah, he's getting a lot skimmed off the top of the Heller Method. That's a very good point. Yeah, the the gobs of money that he gets from the Heller Method is just unrealistic. You couldn't oh, even quantify it. You silly goop. <laughs> Goops and gobs. Oh, I can't wait to see a lot more <laughs> racing shots in this show. Yeah, uh, well, so far we've seen none. So, I mean, there, <laughs> we I, see one. There's one in the opening credits. Yes, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay, let's get into the show then. We're we're let's start talking about this brand new 2017 David. No, 2017. Yeah, that sounds right. I don't. Is know. Is that right? I don't know. Something like that. Let's go with 2016 and safely say 2017. All right, let's go with 2015 and safely say 2013. Hitting As long as we're safe. Well, I think we're safe. Let's see. Hitting the brakes. 2017. Yep. Correct. Okay, so this isn't Malibu Down the Family Man. In fact, this isn't even half the (laughs) series that Malibu Down the Family Man is. (laughs) In fact, this is a completely different show. Yeah, but you wouldn't know it because it features a lot of the same cast. <laughs> like a sub- Except for Kate Marshall. Yeah, Kate Marshall is not there. Instead, we get Randy Wilcox, played by David A.R. White, 
I'm probably going to call him Dan throughout the show. I'm going to try really hard to refer to him as Randy, but it's just going to be really hard. I have him as Dan a few times in my notes, just subconsciously. That's just who he is to me. He's Malibu Dan, the family man. Yeah, we sat through 23 episodes of these characters being somebody else. Yeah. And now we're slammed back into this universe where it's also a TV show. And you have to think that they're different people. What the hell is that? Right? It's, yeah, especially when, like, f- like f- I don't know, five cast members carry over. <laughs> well, <laughs> what the heck? So, David Airway plays Randy Wilcox, a race car driver, who got into a big car accident, and it fricked him up, and then they told him he couldn't race anymore. Even though, from the sounds of it, it was the first and only crash of his entire, like, 20-year career, which seems... Yeah. You know, a bit like, all right, calm down. He could probably get into a couple more crashes. Like, that's just one crash. Well, he can't lift his shoulder up past, like, 30 degrees. Well, for now. So, maybe yeah. Maybe that will change by the end of the episode when they forget that that's a character trait of his. <laughs> as soon as they fix his arm, he should have gone back to racing right away. I mean, <laughs> end of show. Like, the first episode is them moving into this hotel, and then he falls off the roof, and it fixes his arm, and then he's like, you know what? Put me back in the car. <laughs> and then the, the rest of, the other nine episodes are just him racing until the tenth episode when he crashes and his car explodes and he dies, and he's killed horrifically in front of his whole family. A real yeah, Dale Earnhardt just- situation re-show NASCAR races and say that uh, yeah. David... <laughs> I mean, they show Dale Earnhardt's crash. They show his fatal crash, that, and they go, oh, that was Randy Wilcox in that car. And people go, this is in the poorest taste we've ever seen, Pierre Flakes. What are you doing? Why did he drive an all-black car? And those poop emojis after the crash was really weird. <laughs> yeah, the fart sound effects and poop emojis that flashed on the screen. <laughs> Well, how else do you know that the driver's dead? Well, yeah, because when you, die, when you die, you poop and pee yourself. Everybody knows that. And so they had to signify, he is definitely dead. Look, he's farting and pooping himself right now. Our hero. <laughs> poop emojis. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he, 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 I don't know. His doctors are like, you can't race no more. And he's like, all right, I mean, I guess. <laughs> Was it the doctors? I thought it was his wife that uh, ripped him away from the thing that he loved. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I guess it was probably his youngest daughter being some sassy little butthead. I mean, like, Daddy, oh, you man, can't she's got a lot of energy and a little bit too much knowledge in her head, if you know what I mean. Oh, I hate his youngest daughter. She is the <laughs> worst kind of child character in a thing ever. A know-it-all, like sassy little child who you go like you're like seven years old you don't read Kurt Vonnegut books you don't read them <laughs> like what are you talking about and she ruined one for me yeah I have not read this book yet and Ice Nine I'm very disappointed that she ruined this book and this show features a lot of talking heads a la uh, The Office yeah Modern so Family so you get or, to yeah. like get right in her face about what she thinks all the time <laughs> oh yeah and that is terrifying for like a little sassy character yeah yeah she's gonna be unbearable as soon as she started talking i was like i miss emily i want emily back <laughs> i it made me appreciate what we had which was one child named emily and she was great she was a little sassy a little brassy but she had a lot of heart and she was a good person and then this girl is just yuck <laughs> bad and Emily wasn't in every episode she wasn't like heavily featured all the time I feel like this little girl is going to be in every single scene yeah it's an ensemble cast his family is like they're the star those four are the stars of the show and ah oh boy we're gonna have to put up with that <laughs> that'll be fun but so yeah. we got so we have Randy Wilcox. We have his wife, uh, Charlie Wilcox, which I think is like a musician or something. Uh, Charlie Wilcox sa- sounds familiar. Wilcox in general, I think, is quite the uh, country name, isn't it? There's like a bunch of Wilcoxes down in Wilcox Lane. Yeah. Oh, Charlie Wilcox is a Canadian uh, is a Canadian novel. Clown? Charlie Charlie Wilcox's Great War. It's about a boy from Newfoundland who fights in World War One. <laughs> Whoops! Shouldn't have gone there, kid. 
The horrors of trench warfare in this children's book that I guarantee that little sassy girl who doesn't have a name has read. <laughs> oh, definitely she's read. She's read it all. She knows everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we got Randy, Charlie, and then two daughters who I don't think are given names in this episode. Uh, if they were, I didn't catch them. Did you catch them? Uh, I think one is Chuck from accounting. <laughs> Chuck from accounting Wilcox. That's correct. Yeah. And the other one's Randy. <laughs> no, that's the dad. That's Papa. Oh, right. Yeah, the youngest, Randy and Randy. Right. The youngest daughter is named Randy Jr. Like, I don't think you can name your daughter Jr. after a man. Is that a thing that exists? Or, like, yeah. Girls can't be named Jr. as far as I know. I don't know of any. I've never heard of a girl being a junior to anybody. I like that, though. Yeah. I like that as a name. Randy for, Wilcox uh, Jr. for a girl. J.R. Hey, ah, J.R. <laughs> um, we have fun. Yeah, we do have fun. And then they have an older daughter who I don't know what her name is either, <clears throat> but her whole thing is like, I love technology. Clarice. Cla Clarice. What, yeah. did you, what did you say, Clarice? Yeah, Clarice. Clarice Co Wilcox. In the brain. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I gotta. When you told me that you wanted to record this uh, this morning, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't, I didn't make a theme song or anything. I didn't do anything, and it literally took me. <laughs> it took me less than a minute to make that theme song. I went, brought the nice. thing up on YouTube, hit record, hit play, and just did it, and then was done. Faded in, faded out. Like literally, took me like one or two minutes to make. I just good, good enough. Put it away. <laughs> Oh man, I I was actually thinking about this on the way to watching this episode. Uh, <laughs> I realized that I gave you a chore of making this theme song. If you had to make this theme song, it's not it's not a chore. So it melts it was a, my heart. It was a pleasure to know that you. It wasn't such a chore. It was a pleasure. It's always a pleasure okay. to sing for this show. <laughs> so the youngest one is named Darcy, and okay. the oldest one is Delancey. <sighs> that is awful i prefer <laughs> yeah i prefer whatever the other clarice that's way better delancey yeah <sighs> okay well we're gonna call her clarice because even though that's more of a mouthful it's better than delancey and darcy like bam wallets grew on me i feel yeah. like delancey is never gonna grow on me ever mm -mm. no <laughs> no way <laughs> hey going back to music for a second what did you think of the theme song for this show I loved it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> like, the lyrics are literally like, I was a race car driver and I got into a crash. <laughs> and now yeah, we're in Colorado. Any song that's super explan explanatory mm. is amazing. Just exposition dump. Hey, if you weren't paying attention in the first two minutes, don't worry, the theme song will explain everything to you. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. <laughs> what made this uh, episode more palatable is that we only have nine more. <laughs> yeah, knowing that we're we're already well on our way to being done this show is a very nice yeah. feeling. And boy, it's, do we there's so much exciting stuff coming up. So many exciting guest stars and people that have to show up. It's very true. And the cast of characters already is pretty great. Reggie comes out and he shines. Yeah, Reggie playing a guy named Manny. He owns the Dick the general Wilkers. store. Dilk Wilk Wilkers? What? Yeah. His Dilk name, Wilkers. His name is Dilk Wilkers. That's a good name. That's a name that could grow on me. It's a grown on me already, if you know what I mean. So we're going to change the oldest daughter's name to Dilk Wilkers. <laughs> Shouldn't it be Wilcox? No, it's Wilkers. No, it's Dilk Wilcox. It's Dilk Wilkers. <laughs> She's She took her mother's last name. Yeah, she definitely took her mother. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> so they 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 now own. So Randy's dad dies, leaves him the Serenity Inn, which is like a, a like actually a pretty dope hotel somewhere in Colorado. Yeah. It's like they're complaining like, about this place, but it's nice. I would love to live in that place. <laughs> When they step into the kitchen and they're crapping on it and like, oh, there's oil stains everywhere. It's like the most pristine, cool, <laughs> home down yeah. country kitchen mm -hmm. with those big double doors for the fridge and everything. Like, it's it's really cool. Yeah, they got a big, like, wash basin sink 
and like uh, Ooh, yeah. just nice wood, like butcher block countertops and stuff. Is it and like all all these pot? Like I love kitchens that have a bunch of pots hung on the walls. I think that's like when you mm-hmm. hang all your. I, I, that's really nice when you can display your stuff like that. And I, I mean, I'm a sucker for country living, as we've learned over Cowgirl Summer. I'm just a big sucker for country life, and uh, yeah, this show has it in spades, and it. It hurts me that they're complaining about it so much. These spoiled NASCAR kids. We don't even know if he's a NASCAR driver, a race car driver. Well, this place has class and arse all over it. Yeah, not not quite as much class as Sky's Views Restaurants or whatever the heck that place is called. <laughs> I think you got it, Sky's Views Restaurant. <laughs> it's, it is like Sky's View Restaurant or Sky's Viewpoint Restaurant or something like that. They said it like 30 times, and I did not write it down. Yeah, they said it 30 times, and the sign is displayed several times. And I went, nah, it's not mm-hmm. worth It's not worth getting that right. All I got was that it's literally Sky's, like Sky's apostrophe S. She, oh, this is her viewpoint. Very subtle <laughs> show. Sky is a vegan, and we know that because that's her only character trait besides being mean to people. Or like, not mean, intimidating to people. And that's it. That's she has a is. motorcycle that she parks in the restaurant for no reason. And Chuck from accounting is in the show, and he plays a cowardly sheriff. Yeah, who they he gave a gun to. The... Oh, who's that guy from like the '60s that uh, was in the Apple Dumpling Gang? He's <laughs> exactly like that guy. <laughs> oh, Lauren Cardinal. <laughs> Lauren Cardinal. Yeah, from Corner Gas. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I would. Why, why isn't Lauren Cardinal in one of these? Dang it, man! We gotta get Lauren. We gotta get Lauren Cardinal on our show. I like Lauren Cardinal. I've met him before. He's a nice guy. Did you shake his hand? Uh, no, God, no! I refused. I was like, I don't want to touch a celebrity. Ugh. <laughs> that is kind of disgusting. I was thinking of Don Knotts. <laughs> Don, okay. Well, yeah, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. He's like kind of a bumbling goofball of a yeah. sheriff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That that works. Bumbling is the exact word I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, they, sure. they gave him a gun. And they're like, we can trust this guy with a gun. No problem. No. Nope. The only person he's ever shot yeah, is himself it. from the sounds of it. He shot himself in the foot. <laughs> he's a danger to himself, not to the people around him, which is great, which is why they gave him the sheriff's Yeah. Bed. He wore he wore a, a like a bicycle helmet while doubling on Sky's motorcycle. Which, if they would have crashed, he would have died a hundred percent. Do you think he got a you know what? Uh, like a like a DUI? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. He's that's probably why he can't drive anywhere because he's a drunk. He probably gave himself a DUI. For sure, yeah. He was like, I'm too drunk to be driving. I better write myself a DUI and take away my license so I don't have to drive anymore. Gotcha. That was the original opening scene to the show. (laughs) That was the original pitch for the show. Well, I was a police officer and I wrote myself a DUI. (laughs) I do want to see him write something. He seems like a writer to me. Uh, Maybe that's Tommy Blaze. (laughs) That's a real Tommy Blaze. Yeah. Tommy Blaze is a student amused by a lot of people. <laughs> that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, and also the the friggin' bozo from uh, the uh, God Motorcycle Show is is in this as well. He's he plays the same character. He's the only character he's allowed to play a motorcycle man that likes meat. Yeah, I want meat. Give me that meat. And she goes, "Have carrot cake instead." And he goes. Well, that's that's not really an acceptable substitute, but it is good, so thank you. It is good, so thank you. Mm-hmm. I did like that he was like, oh, this will go great. I'll take f- four more of these to go with my coffee. And she goes, have a mango smoothie instead. And he's like, coffee is vegan. <laughs> like, don't, yeah. why don't you serve coffee? People, that's what people like. <laughs> Please just give me coffee. This is a little diner, and it's vegan. It's not... It's from beans. Yeah, it's bean water. Sure, some kind of person had to poop the beans out first, but that's that's fine. Don't worry about that. Are these poop beans? Aren't all coffee poop beans? I don't know. I think only a specialty kind are poop beans. Oh, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah. The poop beans ones. Yeah, right into us. 
Exactly. <laughs> uh, so the plot is like they move into the hotel. People, there's a misunderstanding where people think that they're breaking into the hotel. So Chuck like hits Dan over the back of the head. Sorry, Chuck hits Randy over the back of the head with a cast iron skillet. And then they're like, ah, just get some rest, Randy. And it's like, he has a major concussion. Like, you you cracked him over the head with that skillet. He shouldn't be sleeping. He'll die if he goes to sleep. So don't let him sleep, guys. Go to bed. Go to bed after a head injury. <laughs> that's the message of this episode. Like, that's premeditated murder at that point. He <laughs> Chuck would have had to arrest himself and put himself to death, as, like, as far as I'm concerned. What a way to be a serial murderer, though. It was if you're like in front of a bunch of like head injuries, and then you tell them to sleep, and that's the way you murder people. <laughs> right? You work. That's pretty cool. You work in like the neur- the neuro ward at a hospital, and you're just like, go to sleep. <laughs> Don't worry, just go to sleep. <laughs> that's a brilliant. That how could they? They couldn't ever prove that you did it. Who's gonna tell? If nobody... Only a person like House could figure that out. <laughs> that's true. He comes like, you know. Crip walking over and is like, hey, guys, I'm addicted to Percocets. And this guy's telling people to go to sleep or whatever my deal is. I'm English with an American accent. Oh, oh I'm a real jerk. And somehow that makes me likable. I, I guess. I don't know. I, I love her take on House. Yeah. I've never seen House ever, I don't think. I mean, I'm familiar with it, obviously, because it's in the zeitgeist. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't think I've seen a single second of an episode. Uh, is Tay Diggs on that show? Uh, he was thinking about it. <laughs> but I, I think Tay Diggs is on, or if not Tay Diggs, like somebody else. The guy from uh, <laughs> Save the Last Dance. Don't be racist. The guy from Save the Last Dance. He's in that show. No. Yeah. That's definitely racist. That's not racist. The That's the guy. Oh, I'm thinking of... Uh, that well, I think g- it is Omar Epps. Oh, it's Omar Epps, not Tay Diggs. You're right. All right, that was racist. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Tay Diggs and Omar Epps. <laughs> I got you mixed up. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, those two. I, I forgive you. Those two jockey for roles all the time. Like, those two guys are constantly bumping into each other at auditions. So don't act like yeah. it's a bad thing that I, I didn't remember who was who. Yeah, they're definitely jockeying and racing horses to auditions all the time. <laughs> well, I was a famous jockey until I <laughs> killed my horse. You were a famous jockey until you killed your horse. <laughs> maybe we've already watched a movie this summer about that. I doubt it, but maybe. Yeah, this comes out, what, in December? Yeah, something like that. August, I think. It's June. <laughs> it's June of recording this. But we just, we're so excited about hitting the brakes. And, hey, by the time Dude. this comes out, we'll be done recording these. We'll already be on to the next thing by the time this comes out. So that's nice. Heck Yeah. Uh Oh, Randy hated his dad. His dad was a real scumbag to him. He was a bad dad from the sounds of it. And then when he moves to town, he finds out that his dad was awesome. And, like, everybody to loved to him. To this he, town. Yeah, he was a friggin' saint to this town. Well, I he owned the uh, best uh, business on the block. Well, he owned the best little whorehouse in Texas. <laughs> well, it was that's, definitely a horror house. I mean, that's a little uh, tease as to who might be in this. I think the the guy who plays his dad is the guy from that movie. What are you talking about? Well, isn't like... So the dad... I'm right. Yeah, I am right. Nice. <laughs> well, hey, that's a little tease as to who plays Randy Wilcox's dad. The best little whorehouse in Texas. We'll find out in a little bit here. <laughs> It'd be funny if there was a sign on the house that said Hoor House <laughs> instead of whatever the hotel. Serenity Inn. Serenity Inn yeah. and Hoor House. Ooh, Serenity Inn's already kind of like, ooh, there's probably some whores in here. I mean, I guarantee that there's a rub and tug in, in the city we live in called the Serenity Inn. I can guarantee. Or actually, I that's not true, but there is a rub and tug called the Serenity Spa. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that that's a real <laughs> thing in the city we live in. Well, definitely probably a couple of serenity uh, places where you could get a rub and tug. Oh, for sure. Where exactly are these? Uh, Well, I think the Serenity Spa is... Well, I can't say because that'll give away what city we live in. Oh, yeah. What city in Haiti we're in. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you, it starts with a B. The street that it's on starts with a B, and it's a main street in this city. 
Oh, I know the place. Yeah, right? You know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, I've been there many times. Yeah. <laughs> it's where you got your education. Uh, <laughs> so Wink, wink, education. Hey, hey, know. hey. Uh, so they, I don't know, whatever. Randy goes and meets the townsfolk at, at Reggie's place, which is called like... Uh, Stuff on the Bluff. Stuff on the Bluff, yep. It's the general store that's just full of extras who will never become characters. There's like 10 extras in that shot, and they're all just like laughing at, at Reg Reggie's jokes. <laughs> you go, well, none of you have names, <laughs> none of you have characters, none of you will ever be seen again, probably. I was surprised how many people were in that uh, building. How many Pure Flix staff members were in that building? <laughs> Not staff writers, just no. staff. There's only one staff writer, and his name is Tommy yeah. Blaze, and he's played by 15 different people. Because <laughs> they all know him very well. What did you think of the line, I will cover you in termites and feed you to a bear? Did that make any sense to you? Uh, mm, do you have to add honey before you add termites? Is that the thing? I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't think termites care about honey. No. Uh, do bears care about termites? That's what I mean. The line doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't know. Well, I'm trying to figure it out. What you should have said is... It's I, not figure outable. I will cover you in termites and throw you in a wood chipper. That's what you should have said. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. She was already threatening that to murder her husband. Go all in. Murder your husband. There's probably going to be a lot of murder in this uh, series. Yeah, by Chuck from accounting. <laughs> go to sleep. Hitting people over the head, telling them to go to sleep. Yeah, hey, you should really get some rest. <laughs> uh, Randy needs a handyman to fix the roof of, his, of the building, or else it'll blow down in a southern wind or whatever. So he goes to stuff on the bluff, and everyone's like, Hey, welcome to the town, newcomer. Do you go to church? And he's like... <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah, probably like every Sunday. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I try to go like every Sunday. I don't know. No big deal. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm church's biggest fan or anything. I just try to go every Sunday. And Chuck from accounting is not impressed. No, Chuck hates him for some reason. He loves his family, but he hates him, even though he assaulted Randy. <laughs> like, even though he's in yeah. the wrong all the time with Randy, he hates him. He's very wary of his religious... Uh, acumen and yeah. uh it seems like he goes all the time right yeah i go every sunday oh yeah well i guess we'll see your wife and kids there every sunday then well why would you say like <laughs> sure everyone assumes that randy is lying all the time like when he tells them that he's like a three-time champ in the racing circuit like reggie rand reggie just mandy is reggie's name or whatever he sees all these trophies and goes those are just bowling trophies that you glued different things on top of and and randy's like no those are my like nascar trophies and he's like yeah yeah sure sure buddy it's like google him google randy wilcox it would be so weird to have a career where you get a bunch of trophies all the time it'd be awesome seems like nonsense i would love a career like that i guess you have to either be an athlete or an actor that's the only the entertainment industry is the only industry either sports or or like movies that just give you trophies <laughs> Here's a trophy for singing good. Here's a trophy for driving a car good. I mean, you could win Accountant of the Year, but that, like, comes once every ten years. And that's maybe. just... Maybe. That's like a jerk-off trophy. That's just like, here you yeah. go, jerk. Here it is. Whatever. They don't... You know, it's just like to shut you up, essentially. <laughs> to appease the masses. Exactly. Uh, the handyman in town is a real friggin' lunatic from the sounds of it. He wishes he was a part of the seven tribes of Israel, which I guess <laughs> that's his character. I don't know what that means, but that's who he is. Yeah, he's a fundamentalist uh, Israeli militant. <laughs> yeah, he, sta he doesn't stand with Palestine. He stands with Israel. <sighs> mm -hmm. This is not a political podcast. And he eats a lot of pork. Yep, and he only Which is his twist. He gets paid in canned food. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, he only likes yeah canned pork. Spam. <laughs> Pay me in spam. And they go, well, aren't you like super Muslim or whatever? Is he Jewish? <laughs> Jewish. Aren't you super Muslim? <laughs> 
Pay me in spam. Aren't you super Muslim? Uh, that's not what <laughs> being part of the seven tribes of Israel Ooh. means. <laughs> I bet you Tommy Blaze was kicking himself when he was writing that. Oh, yeah. But he wasn't kicking himself when he wrote the line for the handyman, we don't listen to our women here, said <laughs> genuinely. <laughs> Yeah, that's fun, though. It is. That's also, a good thing for the audience to get into. But also, none of the men in that in that like general store have women in their lives. A hundred percent of them don't. I guarantee. I guarantee that Reggie doesn't have a secret smoke show wife like he does on Malibu Dan. I guarantee that's not the case. It'd be funny if he did, but he yeah. does not. He, although he's probably the most eligible bachelor in this town. What about Chuck from Accounting, the cowardly sheriff? Well, he's a cowardly sheriff. You don't want to stick your wick in a uh, cowardly sheriff. It's <laughs> a very good point. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so th uh, they're like, okay, I'm gonna hire you. Come fix my roof. And he's like, okay, you and me, we're gonna fix the roof. And Dan's like, I can't fix the roof. I'm not allowed to do that. And he goes, well, we don't listen to our women here, so you're gonna get up on the roof, buddy. And he's like, I, I mean, I guess, okay. Like, grow a spine, Randy. Tell him no. Say no. I'm hiring you to do a job. I'm not hiring you to help me do a job, man. Yeah, Randy Dandy. Like, do what you need to do to live on. I know I called him Dan and Randy in that, but I just, he's Dan. He's Dan Marshall. He's not Randy Wilcox. <laughs> I think Dandy Randy is pretty good. That's true, yeah. Or what about Randy Dan? <laughs> <laughs> How about Mr. Marshall? There you go. How about Dan Wilcox? That's a person. Dan Wilcox there is a person. Go. For sure that is. Is that what this... Why don't people just make their names their names? Right? Well, I mean, Pusha T once famously put out an album called My Name Is My Name. Yeah, he was talking about this situation where Dan Marshall was, for some reason, in hitting the brakes. Yeah, Dan Wilcox is the guy who wrote MASH. So... <laughs> Uh, like the book or the no, show? No, the show. The show. Oh, he He's the Tommy Blaze of MASH. <laughs> yeah, that's probably equates. Yeah. Uh, so for no reason at all, uh, Charlie... Yeah, Charlie is Holiday Sinclair in this. Charlie decides to throw a party to and invite everyone in town so they can all meet Dan Marshall. And so... They do. With no meat. With no meat. Well, I mean, that's not the plan. She made trout cupcakes or tr trout brownies. Ooh. So there's some meat there. But but yeah, luckily, Sky shows up with strawberries and cucumber sandwiches. Oh, there were so many cucumber sandwiches in this uh, show. I uh, <laughs> yeah. I feel like having a cucumber sandwich. I don't. I They're... like me a cucumber sandwich. I don't like me a cucumber sandwich. They're fine. No? No. I like a tomato sandwich. Give me a toasted tomato sandwich over a cucumber sandwich any day. If we're talking vegetable sandwiches. I haven't sandwiches. had one of those in a while. Well, maybe that's what you'll have today. Toasted tomato oh, sandwich. I thought you froze. Uh, Your head was so perfectly spill. Thank you. Spill? Spill. Um... <sighs> Spill. Randy falls off the roof and fixes his arm. Spill. Spill. And he doesn't immediately go back to racing. <laughs> uh, Andrea. Yeah, he doesn't immediately go back to racing, <laughs> which is such a plot hole. It's ridiculous. It's <laughs> Andrea, which, <laughs> which is Charlie. This is a mess. I, I don't like the show. I don't like the show already. <laughs> I'm just going to refer to them. What are you talking them. about? I, you know what? I'm done with calling them by their character names. It's Dan Marshall yeah. and Holiday Sinclair and Chuck from Accounting and Reggie. I, I don't want to learn all these new names. I don't no. care. What's so. really messed up is that Holiday and Sinclair is sleeping with Dan Marshall. Oh, my God. The affair that they're having. They moved to Colorado to have an affair. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> he got into an accident on set. <laughs> exactly. And also... Everyone still just dogs on her constantly. Like everyone is just talking yeah. about what a bad cook she is and how she's a like a bad mom and just just <laughs> dogging on her. <laughs> she doesn't have like really anything redeeming in this episode whatsoever. What are you talking about? What about when she says, "Now listen, you silly goop." That's pretty redeeming. <laughs> is that racist? I don't think it's anything. And it's not even an expression. Goop? It's nothing. <laughs> it's you it's silly not goop. Hey, you silly goop. 
It's nothing. <laughs> Buy me a candle that smells like my vagina, you silly goop. <laughs> man. Reagan on goop. Oh, man. That's 2021 for you, baby. What did you Reagan think of the line goop. where uh, Darlena, or whatever her name is, is like, Dad, there's a cute boy in town, and they just cut to, like, the most bland-looking ginger boy ever who's just, like, sitting there, like, like slumped in a chair going, Wah. She's like, oh, that's that's going to be the love interest, I guess. That's the best they could do. Okay. I did like when Dan awkwardly waves at him. That was pretty funny. Yeah, and he just holds two fingers up to his mouth and sticks his tongue between them. And Dan goes, I don't, <laughs> I don't want you spending time with my daughter. Originally, I thought he was pantomiming a cigarette, and then he stuck his tongue out, and I was just like, oh, weird. That would be really funny if the first time he meets him, he's like, hello, and the guy just goes, you want to go smoke a dart? <laughs> hey, you want to smoke a dart? Uh, <laughs> not really. Cool. <laughs> date that guy, I guess. <laughs> Don't date Chuck from accounting, who was like revved up when she said, oh, there's a cute guy in town. He was like... Are you talking to me, 16-year-old girl? Are you talking to me? <laughs> Do you think that's uh, Chuck's son, the ginger? No, I don't think Chuck has... A twist. I don't think Chuck has... Oh, like, in the show, that's Chuck's son? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, no. Oh, Johnny. Oh, that was almost a disaster. I almost spit coffee all over my mic. <sighs> You're real Johnny Foxes. Not a euphemism. No. Uh, so, anyway party happens there's nothing to really tell about it because the show doesn't really do anything with it they just kind of go there's a party moving on and then yeah. so at the end of the episode dan goes into the office and he finds a journal written by his dad chung, chung, chung. and he starts reading and it says to dan marshall in it and so he starts he goes well i'm not i'm randy <laughs> wilcox but i'll read it anyway and he starts reading the journal and it, we hear a voiceover of, of his dad talking. Johnny, do you want to tell the world who plays Dan Marshall's father on this show? By God, I forgot. <laughs> I can't believe this. My brain is fudged me. Oh, I just have the ample dumpling gang. Who is the man behind the curtain, Zachariah? I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> In the brain. No, just kidding. It's Burt Reynolds. <laughs> In the brain. In the brain. I love it. If I was a porn star, my name would be Squirt Reynolds. <laughs>